and welcome back here to Battle of Bunker Hill 2019 here at the Horgan Arena in Orber, Massachusetts. I am the CAC being joined by my awesome tag team partner, Johnny Weird. And we're here to call this awesome game coming up. It is number ranked 97 Providence Roller Derby, the Rhode Island Riveters against 125 Twin State Roller Derby, the Upper Valley Vixens. And yes, you talk to me, sir. <laughs> And, then, and that is Guinness, our, uh, sorry, our old referee came over just to check on everything because everyone's awesome here. But real quick, let's actually run down the rosters here. Skating in the blue with red, white, and black trim. We got 00, zero oh, excuse me, that's bronze roller derby. We got 00, zero Puma Thurman, 013 Monsoon, 042 Flying King, 101 Huracan. Number one, two, three, zero, Princess Sparkle Fist. Number one, six, Boone's Harm. Number one, eight, six, zero, Oakley. Number two, one, eight, Mini Meat. Number two, four, six, eight, Sis Boone Bonnie. Captain, number two, six, Shreddy Roosevelt. Number three, five, zero, Rex. Number four, zero, Milla Lowlife. Number six, Jenna Von Diesel. Number nine, one, seven, Biblioteca with their coaches, Hot Sauce, Alexi Laws, and Raquel Welts. All right, and skating for the white team, Twin State Derby, Upper Valley, and Vixens, we have 056, Terami Susie, number 1000, Felon of Troy, 13, Pumpkin Carve Her, 206, Captain Elizabeth Death Taylor, 2400, Midnight Crasher, 32, Yeti Van Detti, 35, Slamwise Gamgee, number 4, Ivory Tower, 50, Biohazard Jess, 533 Hershey Bad 588 Pale Raptor 717 Bertha Blue Blazes 819 Force of Havoc 934 Lady Dementor 513 is Jules and the coaches we have my baby daddy John Snowflake and Princess Leia Flat. We are lining up for our first champ of the bout. Yep, both these teams coming out with victories earlier today. Providence was over Muddy River and Twin State over Maine. It was such a big shocker of a game. All right, so this should be a pretty competitive. Looks like we have Flying King for Providence Roller Derby up against Bertha Blue Blazes. And don't forget, you can join us live here on the chat. Shout outs you can make. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Or if you'd like to fill us in with some awesome factoids, you can be our off-site producer and give us all the cool stuff here. And also, while you're here on Twitch TV, don't forget to subscribe to Nerd Derby. You can watch all the games this weekend. They'll be uploaded. And you can check out all the previous tournaments they've done this year. So many. All right, and they're off Prim. Again, we're already seeing that aggression playing out in this first bout, and it looks like Blazes for the Upper Valley Vixens has gone ahead and grabbed that lead jammer position. Flying King now finally out of that pack, racing around pack at turn number one. And this goes, to, look at the way Twin State is trying to divide up the pack of Providence. Blazes having to call that one off, and will look like pickup two points and just stopped Flying King. They were coming in and trying to pick something up, but no go. And who do we got coming up right now? Looks on like line? right now we have Monsoon for the Rhode Island Riveters and 588 for Pale Raptor, Upper Valley Vixen. Pale well, Raptor, I'm assuming that's a Pale Rider. Oh, Reference? well, Reference. actually, <laughs> well, actually, I got a crazier fact that I did learn on Pale Raptor. I'll tell you right after this. Both jammers now jockeying for position. Great defense by both teams. Mini Meat trying to knock everyone around in the middle, trying to open up a spot there for Monsoon. But seeing a multiplayer block call, not seeing who that is. But meanwhile, you got Pale Raptor taking that lead. She is making her way around, and Monsoon was knocked to the inside and pushed back to the pack, but she has finally broken her way through for that first go around. And it looks like Raptor up oh, was getting recycled back there, and uh, quick to shove, it looks like a little bit of confusion, not too sure if it's going to the box or not. 
but that will be it. There will only be another two points packed up on there, bringing it out four to zero. All right, it looks like we have Flying King lining up for Rhode Island Riveters and Biohazard Jess starting from the way back. Providence look like they're leaning on a two jammer rotation, but who knows, as they did with the previous game earlier, they inserted some blockers with some surprising results, kind of like we saw Shredder Roosevelt and Sisman Bonnie. But in the lead here, we got Flying King. Looks like Providence goes ahead and gets that four points up on the board and falls off that jam before Bio is able to score any points. Oh, she looks like she might have grabbed that one point before that jam was called off. And it looks like we got some of PRD's own on our chat right now. Janet, fight, fight, fight. Of course, with Havoc going up against Monsoon again. Monsoon, tireless. Ooh, look, a little bump there from uh, Force. Force trying to knock Monsoon off the game, and it ain't going to happen. Monsoon is going to pick up the lead. Force of Havoc getting sent to the back of the pack pretty early, taking off that jammer panty. Monsoon yeah. going through, getting four more yeah. points for Providence. Only two blockers out there for Twin State, and it looks like only a couple of uh, three for Providence as Oakley's sitting in the box. Havoc out there trying to score points, but gets stopped early by Monsoon. And that is gonna be an eight point jam now, bringing five to 12 for Providence. Oh, See right cinnamon on. splices out there. <laughs> hey, splice. <laughs> Looks like we have middle low life going up against Blazes. Ellie, who is a uh, uh, common stance is pretty much playing that pivot role occasionally. They'll actually have her start off at the jammer line, just kind of change things up a bit, feeling out the other team's pack. But you see, they're doing a great defensive job there. That is uh, number 32, Yeti Vendetti, and also number four, Ivory Tower, holding out. But now we're going to have a power jam. I didn't quite catch that penalty there on uh, Blazes, but yeah, power jam now for Providence. We have Oakley in the middle playing some good defense there. Monsoon is, oh no, not Monsoon, it's Mill Low Life going ahead and bouncing through that pack, getting lead jammer for Providence. Pack now frozen there and going in between turns one and two. Oakley trying to clear a path a bit, does come in handy as Miller Low Life gonna put up four points for Providence. Already released from the box is Blazes, now engaged to the pack. Blaze is now working the initial pass pack in the straightaway, going to turn three, and Miller quickly gonna stop that as Blaze is just coming up on her heels. That is gonna be a seven point jam there, Johnny. Pale Raptor going up against Flying King again. Starting a little bit further back from the pack. Maybe in an effort to bring up some speed. Just looking down the oh. barrel of a gun there and at the other end there. Oh, wow, that was amazing work. Uh, the pack of Providence was shifted to the outer line and immediately Pale Raptor saw that opening on the infield and took advantage of that, taking the lead. Whoa. Pretty quick there, knocking down Rexy and going right on through that pack and getting the score more points for the Upper Valley Vixens. Providence walking away with nothing during that jam. Now again, cold up to the line, rocking those stars. It's Monsoon for Providence and Biohazard Jess for Twin State. Look at Biohazard just getting that little bit of a, a start now, pulls in. Monsoon looking on the defense, trying to put a stop there by Hazardous. Who gets taken to the outfield around by Jennifer Diesel and also 
by looks like, uh, oh, that is Huracan out there. Playing great defense for Providence. Twin State crushed to the inside of the track. Biohazard just is gonna pick up that lead there, Johnny. Yep, looks like we might have just had a panty pass between Monsoon and I'm too far away to see their numbers. Who is that? Huracan going Huracan. ahead, taking that star. And one thing that's great about those star passes you'll see is it may not come out with points, but it forces the other jammer to quickly call that one off before other points are scored upon them. Force of Havoc lining up against PRD's Flying King. Lots of movement on the line from Force of Havoc, really confusing those PRD blockers before they start. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to keep your eye on a moving target. Oakley going to the box for it looked like a multiplayer block. Track cut call, that is gonna be assigned to another player from Twin State. And out of the dust comes Flying King. Lee Jam coming into turn number one where the pack has not moved just yet. Rexy in the middle there, Johnny, just trying to break up that pack a little more of Twin State. Well, she did a good enough job because we went ahead and got through getting four more points on the board for Providence. Now Shreddy heading to the box as Oakley's been released. Force of Havoc got the stash of the star and an out of play block, this time on Rexy going to box. Providence very uh, penalty heavy in this jam here. Force of Havoc making their first pass through the pack. Providence getting four more points up on the board. King, they are taking their time. Keep an eye on Havoc, and they're just gonna keep it going. Yep, Coach Hotso saying keep the jam running. Four points picked up by Havoc. It's a very quick moving pack this game for him. Ring with another four, bringing out 31-15. Monsoon lining up against Blazes. Everyone's nice and low to start. Pack advantage going to Providence as one of Twin States is in the box, but standing. So should be rejoining that pack momentarily. It's interesting, it's like when you get a chance to see where some of the players' eyes are landing. You see Monsoon keeping her eyes on the feet, but also the feet of it looks like blazes right at the back of the jammer line trying to see where she is while also trying to find that opening blazes find that opening on the outside of the pack will take the lead for twin state now it looks like monsoon isn't far behind she just made her way through the first pass of the pack and she is coming up so it looks like Twin State goes ahead and calls it before PRD is able to add anything else, but they did grab themselves four more points during that last pass. And uh, Splice, surprise, surprise, it's not Banshee, it's Johnny Weird calling with me. Do you sound a little like uh, Banshee on there? Do I? Yeah, you get this calm, controlled demeanor to you. It's my ESPN voice. <laughs> is this Boombani jamming for the first time this bout? Had a very successful turn uh, <laughs> in the uh, previous game earlier today against Muddy River. But so quick, Biohazard Jess able to just pop out of that pack. Already re engaged now. Getting recycled back this time behind Oakley, all the way up to the pivot line. Goes out of bounds into the infield now, a second rotation behind Oakley, who's now commanding the pack touch. Just move on up. This Bumbani is fighting her hardest against that wall of defense from Twin State Derby. Yeah. Mini meat hard, digging hard into the side of that pack, but has to maintain that bridge region of packs. Oki for the third time going to the box, this time for a, a forearm. 
Minimeat takes a tumble, and it looks like our twin state jammer is able to get through again. Four more points going to Blazes. Not Blazes. Bio. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. But uh, Sisman Bonnie there behind Pumpkin Carver getting pulled back now. Rexy looking for that drawback, and Jess is just going to call that jam where it stands. Did not pick up any extra points on that second pass. Only picking up four there, bringing up 23 to 31. And Splice is now freaking out. My baby. <laughs> She's all grown up now. <laughs> my mommy didn't even recognize my voice. Flying King lining up against Pale Raptor once again. I'm loving the height difference between these two skaters as well. And we're gonna multiplayer block call. That is gonna go on Puma Thurman. Oakley finally returns back out. And in all that muck, Pale Raptor coming out will take lead. The Flying King looking incredibly fast they are there, Johnny. Some really great footwork from Pale Raptor there. See the way her skirt just flared out with <laughs> I was, all that movement. I was just about to comment that it just like billows up into the air, all beautiful, all very graceful. Grace, yeah, very graceful. Force of Havoc in Monsoon. This game is moving right along, We're going to jam number 12, coming up 16 minutes, 34 seconds remaining in our first half. And another multiplayer block call, this time is on Rex. Seeing a lot of multiplayer blocks on Providence, pretty heavily on them. Von Swoon gets knocked to that inside line as Force of Havoc, I, I'm gonna get their names right one <laughs> time. <Both. laughs> looking down when they make their Man. way through, getting that lead jammer position. There's a ton of penalties. Now illegal contact on Shreddy. Both these teams have only two blockers out each. And <laughs> they're gonna call that wrap on that one. Four points actually able to be picked up. We are now down to a single point between both these teams here. Another close game as Providence has gone scoreless the last four jams. Looks like they're only leading by one point right now, Krim. We have that 30 to 31. Let's see if either team's gonna take a lead change or increase that lead. Now look at this change up here. Who we got here jamming out for Providence? Looks like we have Oakley on the line going against Twin State Derby's Bertha Blue Blazes. Changing things up with the jammer rotation and Oakley, who is more of a power hitter, especially a jammer, comes in like, I would say, just like the juggernaut. But Blazes is blazing on fire as Lee come back into the pack at the pivot line. Gonna go out of bounds. Mila Lowlife putting her out there. And that's gonna be a scoreless jam here. And a timeout being called by Providence. Now, you know, Johnny, with being, being your first year of broadcast, you learn a lot of cool stuff, especially sponsors, and you are a big fan of costumes and putting together an elaborate display of your closet of all different cool uh, attire. I do try, yeah. Now, have you heard of Sociopath? No, tell me all about it. Well, Chad's gonna bring it on up. It's New England Roller Derby Report would like to thank their production sponsor, Sociopath. Sociopath is a skater-run business offering custom sewn to order legwear for teams and individuals, size-inclusive activewear designed to fit you. Sociopath also offers dozens of armbands, helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. Team discounts are available. See them at sociopath.ca. That is S-E-W-C-I-O-P-A-T-H for more details. Look at all that pretty stuff there. I'm uh, looking at all that pretty stuff and I'm uh, loving it. I gotta get a picture of that later so I remember to go check them out. There <laughs> <laughs> we got here on the jammer line. We have Pale Raptor and Flying King. Hail Raptor, fighting away through again, getting that lead jammer position for Twin State Derby. But it doesn't look like we are, PRD is far behind. They are flying up the track. Hail Raptor tries an apex jump and gets knocked to the ground and calls it from the floor. 
second scoreless jam. Oh my goodness, because here we go. Here's where both teams are locked neck and neck here with that one point separation. But now the intensity has kicked up quite a bit. Biohazard just on that line against Monsoon. Jammer starting with some pretty low stances. It looks like they're in a little gridlock against both walls of blockers. Looks like this might be the, the first slow moving pack we've seen. Oh, or I'm speaking too soon, and now they're all speeding up. <laughs> right. The only thing that's going to keep Providence up on this is rotating their blockers to the front, but as fast as inhumanly possible to try to stay up ahead. Just finally getting through to the lead. Swoon also through the pack. Pack now moving in from turn three to turn four. Pretty split up as you see a little in the front and a little in the back of Twin State. A shutdown. Close call. One point picked up. We have a tie game here. Yeah, I saw Jess coming around the corner with her hands up in the air and ready to call it after she passed this Bumbani. Flying King up against Force of Havoc. Flying King, you, like usually very fast scare, usually pops out of the pack pretty fast. Only able to pick up two lead jams. So it looks like Twin State has kind of got Flying King for the most part figured out. Oh, yep, she knocked to the inside there, getting knocked back. Being recycled up against Slam Wise. AMG. Oh. Force of Havoc again grabbing lead jammer position for Twin State Derby. Flying King still trying to fight their way through. This makes eight, count them, eight straight lead jams for Twin State. And because of the, and since they started getting those lead jams, they've been like creeping away at the score and able to bring it to that tie. Providence has been kept one, two, three, four, five, six, seven jams scoreless. Like I said, getting it figured out. Providence kept out another one. That's number eight jam in a row, unable to pick up any points. And it looks like three for Twin State. All right, and we have Bertha Blue blazes up against Providence's Mon Swoon. Monsoon starting back a little further this time. Learning some new tips and tricks. <laughs> kind of sizing up where she's going to go. And getting herself right into the very center of the pack. And now the pack just envelops around her and puts her to the back. Wait a minute, so a drawback by Jedevon Diesel. I'm seeing a cut track call go up in the air. Cut track on Blazes. Power Jam and Lead Jam for Monsoon. Providence leaving a nice open gap for Monsoon to skate on through and get caught in that wall, moving up and playing some offense, allowing Monsoon to get through, putting four more points up on the board for Providence. Let's see if they can work that magic a second time here. Monsoon getting caught up in that wall of defense. Looks like they were ready for it as they were Twin City was Twin State, sorry, was able to uh, recycle their blockers. A little bit of a whirlwind out there, Krim. Yep. Oakley and Rex keeping an eye now. Tripod Foreman wrapping around Bertha Blue Blazes. Blazes able to power through. Starts working the initial pass now. Multiplayer block on Rexy. And as it another four lead change back to Providence. Thirty-nine, thirty-four. Nice eight-point jam by Monsoon. Pale Raptor up against Flying King, a popular pair we've seen. Oh, 
Pale Pink. Raptor dancing by on her toe stops, getting right through that pack, grabbing that lead jammer position. Raptor favoring that inside line just before the jammer line. Been very successful every time she finds that little bit of opening to get some points in. Scott, Scott hop, skip, and a jump across that apex, getting four more points for Twin State Derby. It's a very rare sight to see Flying King getting that lockdown. But wait, there's a call by official seeing a back block on back block on Raptor. It's back to back jammer penalties for. Uh, twin states, so and now we're going to have a power jam for Providence. But again, that great defense by Twin State has that hold down on Flying King. And King can't just reset either. Sparky now heading to the box. King finally out with that star stash. Now working that initial pass, but that time on that penalty clock has worn down. Already Raptors standing in the box there, Johnny. Some very quick footwork, nice little spin, allowing them to get through four more points up on the board for Providence. Puma, Pale. yeah, no, that's all, I'm sorry, but Puma, yeah, recycling back, uh, knocking into the infield Raptor. Pale Raptor's able to take those hits and just spin around and keep on going. It's very fun to watch. <laughs> Here, do you line uh, it, it, it hurts to watch because <laughs> I feel those bruises. And now Puma and Rexit force it. Yep, and able to get Raptor out on the infield. We are go going to wrap this up. About three seconds left of the jam. Forum call that is going to go on. 5 3 3. Hershey bad. And another three picked up by Providence here. We're going to see our final wrap up of scores here. 46, 46, a second tie, Johnny. I feel like we're gonna be seeing a lot of that for this bout. Like we said in the beginning, both these teams, ultra competitive, both coming off of wins, both hungry for more. All right, let's see who we got here. Middle low life moving from the inside back to the outside. Milla grabbing that lead jammer position for Providence, although it does not look like Twin State is far behind. Milla just cruised on by Twin and, State blocker. And Milla Lowlife, the champagne of skaters, getting three and oh on that. Now the lead has gone back in favor of Providence. 49-46, but still six minutes, 28 seconds remaining in their first half. Force of havoc in Monsoon. Again, both getting caught up in walls of defense. Puma, yep, Puma did a draw back, and yep, officially a track cut. That is the third, uh, actually, excuse me, the fourth jammer penalty overall for Twin State. Power jam now for Monsoon, who is your lead? Monsoon crashing through that gate again. Four more points going up on the board for Providence. Puma on the way to the box, while Hershey Bad now rejoining the pack of Twin State. Mini me trying to play some offense, getting their jammer through. Great tripod set up, keeping Milla down. Nope, force of habit getting through, just skating by on that initial pass. And Miller's gonna quickly call that one. But I think Havoc might picked up a point. Two, two points according to Wifopathic. So they are not gonna come out empty handed. It's gonna 57 to 48. Very, very close game here, Johnny. 
pale raptor <laughs> up against Flying King once again. Pale raptor trying to get through on that inside line, but not finding the gap there just now. Raptor, raptor through is now officially five for six in leads. Pack now coming in, turn number two. Raptor, again, trying to favor the inside. Does a quick kind of glide around Oakley. Loses the balance a bit, but does grab all four points and shuts out King. It's pretty amazing watching that footwork there, just the way that they glide around. Yeah, take another look. shaking my head watching <laughs> Watch, Oakley extends <laughs> out and is Hold like, nope, it. stay in, stay in. <laughs> Give me them points. <laughs> Monsoon and Blazes. Looks like we had a bit of an Ooh. old school start. Blazes had like this graceful turn glide on turn one. A lot of grace coming from Twin State today. The classically trained Derby skaters. I think they might be. Miller go into the box, confused why, but officials call it something on it, but there's a four point pick up by Twin State. Now bringing it down to a single point between these teams here. And number five, three, three, Hershey Bad trying to intercept and successfully does Monsoon. Puma forcing to the infield blazes. Oh, well, looks like Minimi is heading to the box as well. Swoon getting taken to the outfield. Multiplayer block again going this time on Puma Thurman. We've been seeing it time and time again. Multiplayer block has been like the, the, the biggest issue Providence has been running into in this game. Something they have to definitely keep in mind in the second half. We're going to have a star pass to Miller Low Life with touchdown an opening, but went right into the clutches, the tripod of Twin State. And again, another glide while everyone was focused on that. Another pickup at Blazes. Blazes is on fire on the flat track, Johnny. With all of these spins that these this team is doing, I would not be surprised if we see a triple axle by the end of the bout. Mela Lowlife taking a little bit of a spill with Mini Me, but pushing herself back up, heading to the back of the pack. Look at Sparky here. Yep. Yep. Failure to return on Sparky. Went a little too far back from the pack, doing that drawback. Blaze is picking up an additional four. Blaze is heading up to the pack. Wow, oh. Hershey Bear just launched Minimi into the atmosphere. Yeah, I think we're going to maybe see a replay on that that connection at three. And an official review being called by Providence. Ah, oh. Oh, no. Missed that hit. Oh, there was no. definitely some air under both of those skates. Minimi getting knocked out of bounds. But here you have it. The biggest jam so far by either team. 19 point pickup by Blazes. 71 57. Once we get this official review, we'll give you all the cool information on that one. About a minute and 20 left so far. Again, feel free to join us and share your thoughts here on the, uh, the Twitch TV chat stream here. I'm wondering if Steel Lady is Dr. Steel Good. I'm guessing. Embarrassing. Can't figure out how. Oh, it's on my phone. How to on my phone. No worries. We don't even know how to do that, or else we'd help you. I can't even like manage using like uh, an actual handheld can opener. Nevertheless, my own phone. Thank you again for joining us here at the Horgan Arena in Auburn, Massachusetts for Battle Bunker Hill 2019. This is day one. This is actually game number five, and we got about another seven more to go. Coming up after this game, as we're getting close, a little after seven o'clock or so, uh, running a little late today because we had a, a projector of always. The projector fails at the very beginning. There's always got to be something, but hey, I'm glad something fails at the beginning so it doesn't do it later. But yeah, 7 o'clock, you're going to see Maine versus Muddy River. So this being your first time, Johnny, at the Bow Bunker Hill Tournament, uh, well, like, what are some of your thoughts? What's some of the cool things you've seen? 
Well, I haven't been here that much today because <laughs> I did have to go out and do some other things. Um, but it seems like we have a great group of people here. This seems like a great venue. I don't know if people have been I'm wondering how it is to skate on this floor because it seems like we've had some kind of weird falls every once in a while, but mm -hmm. I don't have wheels on, so I can't really attest to that. Yeah, a little bit of almost like kind of a chalky kind of ground to it because normally they just pile ice on this, but... Uh, I love that, like, they still, it's like that white floor. So it's a nice reflection. It's like natural, like a lot of natural light in here, which is always great. But, uh, was that? Oh, yeah, terrible for the cameras, of course. <laughs> but one thing I love about it, they have the dehumidifiers kicking on since Wednesday. So it is uh, so cool in this. This is probably like the most coolest venue I've been in besides, like, Oh, I think when we did Bunker a couple of years ago up in Fitchburg, where it was actually, well, it was in his 20s outside. So inside the venue, it was about, you know, negative 10. Yeah, it's very comfortable in here. And we're going to get some information here of our Fisher review from our referee Guinness. But yeah, to entertain our audience as we wait. Well, how is everyone doing? Do we remember the timestamp? Uh, no. 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 We don't. We'll find it. Supposed to be entertaining everyone who's listening. We're getting the feedback right now on that official review, so we'll have that for you in just a moment. Looks like both teams are gearing up, ready to go after this official review has been finalized. Yes, I have that very information. Again, it was, remember when we mentioned before, like why middle of the life, like looking very confused going to the penalty box. I do remember the that. The challenge was the failure to uh, uh, challenge and the failure to yield that she did yield in time. After review, the officials agreed, yes, she did in time. So that penalty is going to be stricken off the record for her, and they're going to retain their official review. Okay, good. By a hazard just out there, lead for Twin State. Oakley rocking that star for Providence. Oh, Bio just cruising by on that outside line without any defense from PRD. Scoring those four points nice and quick and calling off that jam. And another, uh, I, think it was, I think we see another official review being called by Providence. Interesting to see how this one's going to play out here if they're just using it as a timeout. And I do believe that might be what it is because I see uh, just chatting with the team. Yep, Providence is utilizing that official review just as a timeout. we got about 47 seconds left. What looks like it's going to be the final jam of our first half and going to be done in that start is going to be Flying King. Going skate to skate against Pale Raptor. Both teams in a little huddle right now, telling all their team secrets. I always, I always have this thought in my head that, like, it, like you know, if, if we ever mic'd like some of these uh, huddles, like they kind of, like they kind of do in certain sports that we would not be hearing any discussion about Derby whatsoever. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, it's like, where's the after party again tonight? <laughs> Sometimes it's just like, you all look a little stressed and just, you know, take it take it easy, have some fun. It, it, interesting, another time out call by Providence. So they already had lost one time, they already used one time out and they used a second one and they just used their second official review to burn it as a time out. So I'm just curious to what that was about. Hot sauce going out to Axes of Steve, one of our referees here, our head referee for this one. And now they're approaching the, uh, the NSO table. Gonna see if maybe something with scoring or what. Oh wait, no, it look, looks like they're returning a timeout to Providence. This is all just too confusing here, Johnny. And this, the score right now is a palindrome. Oh, I didn't even notice palindrome. <laughs> yes, you finally called your first ever palindrome on broadcast. <laughs> Splice, our baby's growing up. <laughs> Flying King and Pale Raptor jumping to it. Pale Raptor getting that lead jam position. Nice and quick again, getting in on that inside line, which seems to be your favorite. 
Lion King flying around the track. Oh, oh and King doing a quick swerve underneath. Dig King pick up a point. Yes! Both teams. Wow. Whole four more points picked up by King, it looks like it's being called. And only th three for Twin State. It looks like Pale Raptor had taken a little tumble and called it from the ground. I don't think they took into consideration how quick Flying King was moving just then around the track to try and grab those points. Nope, no, it looks like yeah, they're only putting up three there for Providence. That makes a little more sense there. So 61-78. And they're going right to halftime here, Johnny. So you're in charge of the wheel toss come up at halftime. Oh, we're doing a thing? This nope, time? just kidding. There is no wheel <laughs> toss. I was like, okay. Uh, you actually get a break for a change. Along with all of you out there, definitely take a moment and uh, go uh, hit the bathroom, grab some food. Come join us back for the second half, and we will be right back. We are back. The second half of Providence Roller Derby taking on Twin State Roller Derby. I am the CAC being joined by Johnny Weird. And it's been a pretty tight game so far. We had a couple of ties and now Twin State taking a uh, step ahead there. Uh, but uh, tell me some of the cool facts that you picked up on here. The cool facts that I picked up on me, which I mean, Krim wrote them down for me to read <laughs> to you guys. Um, Providence Roller Calls Derby out. <laughs> scoreless for eight jams. Kayfabe, kayfabe. I just want to have the work go to where it's deserved. Uh, yeah, so prd has been scoreless for eight jams, and our highest scoring jam was 19 points, and that was by Bertha Blue Blazes. Um, Flying King also had a pretty high scoring jam at 12 points earlier in the game as well. So now we have, let's see, Monsoon going up against Blazes. No, Biohazardous. I keep getting them confused, and I apologize for that. It's because they're both awesome. <laughs> They are. They're all awesome. I can tell Pale Raptor part because she has that awesome skirt that I can't get enough of. You just, you that, that, you're just going to say you should ask her later where she definitely gets that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I need one. I think it's magical. And it was gifted to her from the gods. That's the only thing I can assume. You should tell her, you should tell her that's what you believe and see her in her comparison. Yeah. But look, since we've come back like from uh, from uh, halftime there, two uh, two lead jams in a row for Providence. This time with Flying King coming around the track and able to put another point on the board, bringing now 64-78. And it's definitely oh great! If I mention this, here comes the announcer's curse. So uh, also we're looking up there. It was a big stretch Providence had difficulty with in the middle of the first half. They went eight jams scoreless, which was the opportunity tw tw Twin State needed to come back, bring it down to a single point, and then tying and then taking over the game. Monsoon and Force of Havoc, both starting a little bit further back from the jammer line to try and eye those spaces that they could try and crawl through. Force of Havoc tried to skate by on the outside, but took a hard hit from Oakley, sending him to the back of the pack. Look how quick and smooth Havoc is. Didn't seem to slow her down though as she went ahead and grabbed that lead jammer position. Monsoon not far behind as she's trying to close that gap between jammers. Seeing a direction call, that going on to 1-0-0-0, Felon of Troy. Only one <laughs> point going on the board for yeah, State. Yeah, check out this replay here. Boom from Oakley. Whoa. I'm impressed Havoc popped back up and took lead after that. That was amazing. Yeah, a lot of hard hits right on that corner that we've been seeing. Same plays for Mini Me, lost all of her footing. Now we have Blazes going up against Flying King. And now that tripod lock in with Huracan. Mila and Puma. And then a trade off as Boone's Arm comes in. Flying King coming in. They are picking up their second jam in a row in the second half. And now Puma returns to the box. This is going to be her fourth penalty coming in. 
And uh, as mentioned before, as I took a look at the, the spreadsheet, uh, Providence having actually a total of 16 points. Oh, we'll get some information. But yeah, I'm sorry, 16 penalties from Providence in the first half. Uh, no one was in danger just yet, but uh, overall it was multiplayer block that was having the, uh, the big issue for them. Quick shout out to Sparrow Doom telling me where Raptor got that kill. I think I get targeted ads from them on Facebook. <laughs> This is a targeted real life ad. <laughs> Flying King fighting through that pack. Dodging and weaving. King not calling it, being told just to keep on playing and exchanging score for score. But now they think they have a little bit of a lockdown going on. Blazes Puma forcing a little bit of a recycle back from the infield, giving an opportunity for King to re-engage the pack. But now King going out of bounds and that is with Helena Troy. And King back out there, seeing a little bit of a, 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 a shift in the tide. Three times Blazes get sent to the infield, twice by Pumo, now one by Boone's Harm. Juan Khan getting lost, King, not Khan, King getting lost in the <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> a shifty little shuffle there, and some more points picked up on that one. Now gonna bring up uh, 91 to 82. But 18 point jam from Flying King. And about a uh, 12 that we can see. Oakley and Biohazard Jess both vying for position on that jammer line. Looks like everyone's trying to squeeze by on that inside line. Pack's actually moving them backwards. Bion moves to the outside, trying to get through on the outside line. Uh-oh. He's sent to the box, giving Providence a power jam. Just in the box, and that's going to give, yep, that lead to Oakley. You're jumping in, and then losing their pivot, too. So pivot and jammer for Twin State in the box. And they got to be very careful on that, where Providence had 16 penalties by the end of the first half. Twin State had 19. Mostly a lot of those forearm issues. Again, just got to be aware of where your body is landing on other skaters. Oakley coming through, picking up four. And now just back in the mix of that pack. Sending Oakley back. Both of the jammers being sent to the back of the pack now, along with Shreddy. It's a lot happening. <laughs> yeah, the, the longest one definitely went for Oakley there. Being pulled back by zero eight. Whoop. And her number disappeared. <laughs> but yeah, no points picked up there by Jess coming in. And guess what? We're back down to a single point game here, Johnny. She's on the other foot this time, though. It's Twin State holding that one-point lead. And oh, there we go. Just waiting down that clock there. The <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm slowly dying here. <laughs> that is my Sounds baby. My throat coat. Oh, no. <laughs> throat coat yeah. I got my holes lozenges. Thank you to our host, Mass, Ma uh, Mass Maelstrom, hooking us up with some lozenges all weekend long because we're just chatty, chatty, chatty cats. But now, as we got a timeout call by Twin State, now that's going to be two timeouts left for both teams and their official review. 22 minutes there. Call out for Sispen Bonnie. Woot, woot. Great defense by Steele. But yeah, it looks like she also has a rainbow kilt for practices as well. I'm jealous. Like, you two need to, like, definitely I do share. Have that, I do have a pretty great rainbow skirt, though, <laughs> that I did wear in Providence's last game. Yeah, that was an amazing one. And also, yeah, like, the Macho Man armbands to match, too. I almost didn't wear. 
because they were too much. But no, you can never be too <laughs> much. Come on. <laughs> Especially Pride Month in downtown Providence. The only crime in that city in June is not being too extra. <laughs> I don't know if that's the only crime. Force of <laughs> Havoc going up against Mom Swoon. And we're getting a high block call. It looks like that's going to be on Spocky. Havoc picking up the lead for Twin State. We're just doing a little online shopping, checking out these kilts. <laughs> Swoon really held in tight by a tripod. Set up by Twin State. Four points picked up by, and we have a star pass to Huracan. Yeah, interesting to see how this one is going to play out. As we're losing blockers, bleeding pretty much blockers to the box from both teams there. But no, Providence still having a little bit of a pack edge to it. Huracan, oh, and they're calling Huracan on a cut track. Power Jam now going to Twin State. Four more points for Twin State. Twin State now on the verge of hitting the century mark. And now you got four blocks as a province taking alternate hits there but able to still squeak on through a four wall of Providence is Havoc, 103.90. Providence lining up another strong wall of D, but Twin State is already starting with that offense. Great angle there by Sparky, looking for that, like, a look for that bounce, yep, and a track cut. Yes, yeah, Sparky did the drawback, and it was no, they stepped into the infield. Power Jam now going to go to Huracan. Huracan picking up four points, but with that penalty being so close at the end of the jam hook, we're going to have a power start for Providence here, Johnny. And it looks like we just have Huracan picking up four points. Yeah, just two blockers starting for Twin State as well. So Milla, given with that power star, having even more of an advantage here. And we're gonna have a quick swap out. Milla getting subbed out. Coming in as Flying King. Oh. Whistles. An official timeout. Want well, to thank everyone again for joining us here and Twitch TV for Nerd Derby. If you have not subscribed yet, what's wrong with you? There's so much great action to catch up. So many more tournaments coming up. So many tournaments early this year they have done with great visuals, great commentary, just great all around quality, mwah, top quality product for production. I'd like to thank Nerd Derby. Thank you very much. And also, we can talk more once again, since we got this a little bit of a first time out, about Sociopath. Yeah. Sociopath, New England Roller Derby would like to thank our production sponsor, Sociopath. They're a skater-run business offering up custom sewn-to-order legs and for teens and individuals. They are size-inclusive active wear leggings and shorts and all sorts of stuff designed to fit you. They also offer dozens of armband and helmet cover options for scrimmage and competition. I'm checking out these leggings and I love them. I know, I want I want custom made ones myself. <laughs> we should get custom made ones that match against each other and like Wonder Twin action. Oh, then uh, de definitely, then, we're, then after this game, we're gonna go to sociopath.ca and log in and see what we can get from them. Meanwhile, Flying King already picking up four. There was only two blockers out there for Twin State. Again, heavy in the penalties they were feeling and with that, now we have 819 Havoc back out there being crushed down. It looks like between Susbumbani and Oakley. Another four pick up by <laughs> King, who is still listening as Milla Low Life on the scoreboard. But we forgive them. It's been a crazy tournament so far. But now we are down to a three point. That's three points separating these two teams here. And now Havoc finally getting around Oakley. Damage has been done. This is now working the initial pass. King in charge just now. Looks like Twin State's gonna lose another blocker. Back to the box, King through. Going to call that with four more points added up. And with that, we now have a lead change back to Providence, 106 to 105. That one point, just stick it in there. It's their favorite number to lead by today. 
now we have Mel Low Life jamming for Providence up against Bertha Blue Blazes, whose name I got right for the first time in four jams. <laughs> It's the alliteration in it all. <laughs> it really gets to you. I don't know if it just blazes and buys. I just keep getting confused. There's well, no reason for me to and, do so. And don't forget, it's, me. it's Bertha Blue blazes at Battle of Bunker Hill. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many bees. <laughs> no, they bees. were here They were here last year at All Eight on the Floor. But they are also in attendance and also watching from uh, online here at Twitch TV. Poxy even calling out another close game. It is. And as, as announcers and broadcasters, it gives us a freaking heart attack when you get close games like this. Miller going out more of a defense around Bertha. Bertha, though, digging through, able to find her way to the middle of the pack. And again, that's the, the, the issue for Providence. Multiplayer block, this one going on Puma Thurman. And with that, Blazes is going to take that lead jam now. For Twin State, this is their third lead jam out of eight in the second half. Milla still has yet to get past even the jammer line. Blazes fires back, picks up four, going to start tipping the scale back to Twin State, but now we're going to have a star pass going to Boone's arm. This be Boone's first time jamming in this bout with the star pass. And a forearm going to go on the pivot there. Four twin state can't quite see who that is from that angle. Puma Thurman back in the action, going to play some defense, offense, trying to see who's up there. And that's going to force that call off. We got another lead change yet again. Now 113 to 106. This is a ridiculously close game. About five lead changes I count right now. Biohazard just starting, starting way back at the turn. Picking up some speed before it just hits that jammer line. Up against Monsoon. Both of them fighting on that outside line. Ah, trying to switch up her game, move to the inside. There we go. Biohazard just getting that lead jammer position after zigzagging back and forth. Monsoon just making it through now after taking a bit of a tumble right around that pivot line. And a quick stop. Great try by set by Providence. Gonna put a lock down and that's gonna make that a scoreless jam. Oh, no, they're actually putting up a single point now, yep. Clarification, single point to Twin State. That's gonna actually get them to 114 to 106. Brian King, a pale raptor. Raptor in with Puma. And Puma sent to the box again. Looked like that was a forearm that was called. Hill Raptor coming around. Again, dancing through on that inside line. Yeah, not too sure if there was any. Yeah, it looked like I'm going to see up three. Yep, it looks like a tram referee said there was three hips passed before going out of bounds there. So that's not going to bring it 117 to 106. To taking a look here. I think uh, we're seeing some activity going on in the penalty box. Now wait to see if we get some updates coming up here as our NSOs are doing such a fantastic job all day today as well. Some of them playing back to back to back to back games uh, here at Battle of Bunker Hill. And two of them are actually announcers with us here today. We've had Apex Predator and also Brady Punch, who was just on the stream with me for the previous game. 
And now our officials just going over all the details in the penalty box. This is an official timeout. 50 minutes, 29 seconds remaining. Again, thank you so much for joining us here at Battle Bunker Hill. This is just day one. And if you love both of these teams, they are going to be back here tomorrow. Uh, what's one of the games that we're going to be seeing here? One of the games, game 10 at 3 o'clock, we have Maine versus Providence. So be sure to tune in for that. Before that, we have Mudder, Muddy, not Mudder, <laughs> Muddy River versus Twin State at 1 p.m. Yep. So they're going to be back midday, back to back between games 9 and 10. And then they're going to be capped off of both at the beginning and end of tomorrow with some MRDA action. Mohawk Valley versus Toronto and Maelstrom versus Montreal are going to kick us off in the morning. So get your caffeine ready. Stay in your Sunday pajamas. I almost wore pajamas uh, this morning. Should have. My leopard moo A leopard moo Yeah. Oh. Heck yeah. <laughs> Why the... Bleep. Did you not wear that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I figured I, jeans are more formal. <laughs> I, since uh, we were, uh, a few years ago, Providence was playing Maine, and they had a B game in the morning, Sunday morning, after a wild after party. Uh, and, and with Providence, it was a wild after party. Uh, and, of course, they said it's a hangover bout. And I go, well, I got to have a hangover bout fit. So I showed up in Cthulhu slippers, a Batman onesie with a butt flap and my Teddy Ruxpin with hangover glasses. Like, See, if I had better, here. yeah, if I had better slippers, I probably would have wore it, but I couldn't, I couldn't think of something that would match enough. But it's got to be comfort too as well. Yeah. Extra cushion. All right, we're back into the action here and let's see what we have. Monsoon, Force of Havoc. Yeah, I, Did we find out if they made any? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think uh, Puma hit seven penalties there, because now we got uh, see a Huracan sitting in the box. Sis Mumbai standing up in the box right now, but Monsoon at the German line against Force of Havoc. Havoc so incredibly quick on her skate does get lead, almost slid out. Nice and quick. You haven't seen too many jammers getting stuck for too long. What oh. a hit! Double oh. tumble. But swoon right back up on her skates. Havoc making their way through. Four more points. Looks like four more points. Nope, just for Twin State. That was Mon Swoon's first pass through. She did not grab anything. 121-106. And we're gonna watch this replay. Get slow -mo yeah, this hit that hit. collision. Take take us through it. I can't even tell how it happened. Was well, it? Then, we're gonna get another look at it. <laughs> Swim coming in. And just yeah, it was like bowling pins is <laughs> getting knocked around. Yeah. Weebles wobble and they all fell down. All <laughs> right, we have Pale Raptor and Hail Raptor just getting through before I can even announce that they're skating against Flying King. Jetta getting nailed for a multiplayer block. King now out of the pack. Pack pretty spread thin. And Millick making that connect with Raptor. He's gonna call that one off, stack another four points up. Much like we saw and uh, it's about right about at this time of uh, the first half, we saw Providence go about eight champs scoreless. Now they're up to about five. But now we got Sisbumbani coming up into the rotation. And a timeout call by Providence. Hot Sauce bringing the team in a bit. And a little, a little get together, a little huddle for Twin State on the line. Hey Pox, if you enjoyed the camera views, stick around coming up because when you see Maine versus Muddy River after this, I am going to be the sideline camera operator. Which means I'll probably get like shots of the ceiling 
uh, the skates of the refs. And then you can tell them how bad he's doing. Yes. <laughs> and this is why they try to make sure I don't have any other jobs in Derby. <laughs> Also, I definitely got to give a shout out to the EMTs. They've been working around the clock today in uh, different uh, <laughs> different stages altogether, different shifts, I should say. Uh, take care of quite a few of the skaters. Got their heads rattled a bit, but they are A-OK, -okay, nothing too serious. All right, looks like Oakley's Ooh. taking the jammer position for the Riveters. Up against Biohazardous. And it looks like it's gridlock on the jammer line. Oh, so the infield. We got an illegal contact going on Rexy. But even after that drawback, Jess is gonna take that lead for Twin State. Oakley powers out of the pack. Shreddy with another drawback to the pivot line for Jess is gonna have to put the stop on it as Oakley's catch up fast. And that's gonna be a scoreless jam. Now coming back up to bat, you're gonna see Pale Raptor and Lion King. Lockers are starting on the pivot line. A little bit of an old school start there. Giving the jammer some time to build up some speed. And, and you don't oh. give that to King at all, and that's why. Yep. King lead jam now for Providence. Sparky head into the box. Rexy now released from there. Pops on through. We're gonna see. Yep, zero going up for Twin State. Wait to see for the final point. Score going up for Providence. Our officials now discussing on the sideline. Wife Opathic being the jam ref. And only Just one not. point. So Flying King did get a point before going out of bounds. But still, anyone's game. We've got 11 minutes and 32 seconds. we got a whole lot of derby to go. Monsoon and Bertha Blue Blazes. getting pushed further and further back and blazes doing that zigzag serpentine zipping around lead jammer goes to twin state derby swoon finally got that open on the inside trying to catch up about half a track away pack moving fast now coming up to the straightaway between two and three and swoon has snuck around the pack on the outside picks up four points Blaze is gonna have to get their way through the pack to try to make up for that, and will do so. Great footwork by Blazes. And also on the chat said the same thing. Great footwork by Blazes. I couldn't agree more. I thought you were just reading it. No, I wasn't. No, it was, it was generally just a footwork she puts into it. It's just phenomenal. And Swoon able to still pick up additional more points. Bring up 130 to 117. Only about a five point pickup for Twin State. 10 for Providence. Flying King and Pale Raptor again on that jammer line, becoming best of friends. Now notice that the pack has moved back to the jammer line. Yeah, they said that was a mistake. We. We saw the error of a ooh. ooh. A nice little <laughs> Wake defensive up. hit from Pale, Pale Raptor. And King finds an opening too. Raptor pacing herself. King starting to catch up. Pack doing that fast pull all the way up into the straightaway. Saying go for it. And oh, able to squeak out three points. Spoon and Force of Havoc. Force of Havoc moving a bit further back. 
Getting their bearings, finding that opening, making their moves. Of course, if Havoc finds an initial opening. It's a wide opening on the side, that, on the uh, outside line, but Swoosh cuts through the center to the inside of turn one. We'll take that lead. Havoc with the stash, gets knocked into the infield, back behind Shreddy Roosevelt, and now turning up the heat is Midnight Crasher. Trying to do a number on Swoon. Swoon able to through, gets four points up for Providence. Havoc finally out of the pack, resets the star on her helmet. Again, Swoon. both teams are feeling it, really putting their all in. Swoon just gonna have to put a stop to that. Gets a point, and it looked like Havoc was able to still squeeze out two more points, bringing to 135. Providence now up to 122. Actually, yep, oh, yep, it, let's just try and see some corrections on the board there. Actually, it looks like they're saying one now because it's down to 134. Uh, has just and Flying King both out there for respective teams. Just able to pick up that lead. Flying King making their way through on their first pass and racing to try and catch up. Yeah. Providence, Providence blockers had their back to Jess. Jess used that opportunity to try to find that open and does. And now just keeps on skating, waiting to call it off, telling the pack to keep on moving. And King does pick up a single point at that call off. Yeah, it looks like Twin State was doing their best to just call it at the last second. And typically you see that because they're trying to tire that jammer out and make them skate further around the track that they need to before they're able to score any points. But they were able to grab that one. Yes. And sometimes that's all it comes down to. Absolutely. As you see in the mix there, you got Blazes and Oakley, and Blazes finds out on the outside. Blazes takes down two of Providence blockers, but still gets stuck behind him, and oh! Oak almost turned into a defensive mode, and we got a power jam now going to Providence. Did you catch that penalty? My eyes were on the other side. It looked like it was a forearm there. So forearm call. Looks like they're down a blocker as well, giving Oakley a bit more of an advantage. There Pro we go. Oakley gets four more points and makes her way around the track. If there's one thing we saw early was power jams are something Providence is great at capitalizing on. Last time it was Monsoon, now we have Oakley. And this time, multiplayer is going to fall on Twin State. Yep, looks like Yeti then, Deddy being sent to that penalty box for that multiplayer. Four more points going up on the board for Providence Roller Derby. And again, like we see, smaller, smaller and smaller gap between these and two scores. Both teams now bleeding more blockers to the box. Re Rexy is on their way. And a 0 8 6 there. It's whose number I did not catch on my roster, unfortunately. Oakley picking up another four. The rage moves on as we've got 21 seconds remaining in our jam clock. This move now on the way to the box. Four four shoot. Oakley finds a, a nice, a nice slim opening there on the inside of turn four. There, Johnny. Yep. Sometimes they see that opening, they have that one shot to go for it, and that's really all they need. It's pretty much becoming a race for points. And we're gonna wait till we see a final total there. Wow. So officially 12 picked up by Twin State, bringing them to 150. And 18. 
Looks like, yeah, 18 by, so yeah, just one point away from having the top score there. And let's see what we got some whistle action here going. I think we have ourselves at, we got a timeout. Timeout being called by Twin State. So now nine points, count them, nine points separates these teams. Four minutes and seven seconds. What, Tony, in your, in your perspective, you've called Providence for quite a while now. What do they need to do in a situation like this with Twin State to get to tying, if not breaking the tie and getting ahead for a victory? Well, what we've seen today, I think, from Twin State is they have some fantastic footwork on their team. And I think that Providence needs to be aware of that. Providence has a lot of jammers that like to try and push directly through a pack, but I don't know if that is going to work here. I think they need to work on their footwork as well. And it might just come down to a dance-off. It might. And, you know, we're always down for dance-off in Derby. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, what it comes down to is like also Providence having to maintain those penalties. And both teams, actually, because we saw in that last gym, just blockers left and right on both teams just filling up that box towards the end here. And that's not a mistake either team can make. Spoon, picking up what I was laying down, moving back and forth on that footwork. But still, it goes to Force of Havoc, picking up that lead jammer position again for Twin State Derby. Havoc drawing a pack that's only at the pivot line. Spoon being recycled back, that is behind. Number 533, her, she bad. And four solid pickups by Havoc. And it looks like we're going to have a, a star pass going to go to Miller Lowlife. Havoc looks like it was about to call out that jam and maybe gets a cue from the coach and decides to, to keep it going. Yep. I think it's my baby daddy making that call. Now Miller fires back with force and now we got an eight to four jam. And beautiful hit to the infield by Sparky. Miller almost came in to pick up a couple more. Oh, hot and sauce running out into the track with a timeout. Yeah, a timeout call this time by Providence. Bringing now 160 to 145. And just like that, we went from a nine point to a 15 point separation. Still, we got that three minutes left and <laughs> honestly, anything could happen. Still anyone's game with such a close score. It's, it's insane. If you watched Siege of Central New York, something similar that like there did happen between uh, <clears throat> that was the, uh, oh, let's see. It was Milwaukee and Providence there. But Milwaukee held uh, much of the game since jam one, and then it came to the final jam, and all it took was one power jam, and as Flying King came in and picked up, well, I think it was uh, nearly 25 points there, and came yeah. back to, to cl clinch it for Providence. We've seen it was a lot Bru of power Bruce City jams. Bruisers. That's what it was. Bruce City Bruisers game. Yes. Yeah, we've seen a lot of power jams. We've seen a lot of penalties. So you don't know. You don't know what you're gonna see. A hush falls over the crowd. I do see two uh, Twin State Derby jammers on the track, though, which is not right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Biohazard just Ooh. going up against two Oakley. Oh, how do I? <laughs> Oakley took the star off, and, and King's like, what are you doing? I think they were going to attempt maybe an early star pass there, but in that mess, that gave Jess the opportunity to come and take that lead. Oakley now officially through that pack. Providence has to cinch up, but again, 086 there for Twin State, clearing the path as a four point pickup. Just being told just to keep going with it, run down that clock. Providence stepping I, up to play some offense, trying to get Oakley unstuck from this pack of blockers, but she is sent to the back of the pack again. What I think it looked like there was Oakley was gonna do the, the quick star pass to Flying King. Flying King's like, no, 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 not yet, <laughs> not yet the whistle. And, and sure enough, in that uh, uh, that ball of confusion. Yeah. 
you know, that that happened. But then we got. And like we said, anything can happen. That's a decision that took maybe half a second and, you know, distracted yep. everyone enough for them not to get the lead jam on that one. Yep. And that's going to call up Bertha Blue Blazes and Monswoon down to about a minute 40. Everyone's starting nice and low. Blue Blazes doing a little spin move. Oh, try to squeeze through that opening on the inside, but it looks like PRD kept it closed. There we go, Blue Blazes gets their way through, getting a lead, Jammer. Swoon also released from the pack now, moving into turn number two. And a clean slide through, four point pickup. Being told to keep going, Monsoon, oh! Gets tripped up a bit. And now gets caught up and that is Elizabeth Taylor at the front of that tripod. Elizabeth Taylor, such a good name. It's a great name. Slam wise again. Making their way through. Four more <laughs> points up on the board for Providence. Yep, slam wise Ganji there. Great defensive hit. Oh, Rexy just gets bowled over. Her whistle. And we're getting a high block call on Blazes. High block call. And oh my goodness, 17 yes. point separation here. Yep, here is that power jam we were talking about. This could make or break the whole battle. Oh down. my goodness, but now look at no movement. Swoon possibly trying to favor in a star pass, but no, Nilla in the back end. Great defense locking in. 22 seconds remaining on that clock. Forearm call that's going to go on the pivot for Twin State. And a star pass to Milololo, but in the star pass itself, quick hit into the infield. Does not benefit at all. Blazes back out on the track, and that is going to wrap up this game. And four points were still picked up on Miller Life. Yeah, the game has stopped, they're but still they're, still, they're still playing. What is going on? <laughs> stop. Stop you, crazy. An official review being, being signaled by Providence on that because, yeah, there was still some movement going on that track there when that clock ran out. Yes, yes, now, yes. Coach Hot Sauce we see going out there, also my baby dad, they are going to have a official review here. Again, we're going to end with an official review call, so don't go away just yet. We're going to get some clarification here. Woo-hoo! So, your first broadcast call, we had several lead changes. We had tie scores. We had a lot of drama happening. We and now a we're palindrome. ending. A palindrome. Yes, a palindrome. And your first. I'm so happy you got back on your birds. But now ending here with an official review, how would you how would you describe your feelings right now before being able to collect everything? Just your feelings of this entire journey of your first broadcast. Well, I think I'm pretty awesome. I think I did a pretty good job. No critiques, other than. <laughs> I was waiting for you to crack a smile. And I love that you straight faced it for as long as you could do that. Other than just messing up everyone's name all the time. <laughs> Should learn the skaters' names. Don't worry, I keep and forgetting. And stop referring to skates as wheelie shoes. As what? Heelys. No. Heelys? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Can so. we play uh, as a halftime event? We should do a, a mini jam just with everyone wearing Heelys. I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> I'll snap my ankle after about three meters. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think they're that hard. Kids use them. I, have you seen? Have you met me? I trip over thin air. So <laughs> also, a quick shout out. Thank you very much for Nerd Derby being here. Chad and Lady Lana doing a fantastic job all weekend. Lots of great commentary feedback. We're seeing a great production value of this tournament. And we still got another game today coming up. And that, once again, is Maine versus Muddy River. And then we still have another day of Derby. And again, if you're a fan of either of these teams here, Twin State coming back. Hawks, 
Puck's, no, go ahead. I'm uh, just okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, game nine at one o'clock, Muddy River versus Twin State. Once again, game number nine, one o'clock is Muddy River versus Twin State. And then right after that, Maine versus Providence at 3 p.m. Hopefully if we're on time <laughs> for game number 10. So what's going on? So everyone's chiming in because they say they want to see you on skates. But nope. I want to reiterate that it's not going to be skates. It's going to be Heelys. Do and you, I think that's do you want an important me, detail. Do you want me to call the rest of the season in a wheelchair? Because this is how we get cat calling games from a wheelchair for the rest of the Providence season. Aha, we finally figured out who this other. It's Jane. Jane Ostentatious. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite names this season, Jane Ostentatious. Very interesting to see how this is going to pan out. This is some deep discussion going on with the officials here. But still lots of smiles on both sides. Everyone having a good time here at Bunker Hill. But round of applause definitely has to go to Twin State, not only just for this game, but that big old battle they had with Maine this morning. Huge, huge victory for them. When you started talking about a very big battle. I thought you might have been talking about the real battle of Bunker Hill for a moment. Oh, yes. And it, I was like, wow, we're really just... <laughs> deep history. We're going to... Turn this to official a history review. podcast. <laughs> but I can tell you a story. Once upon a time, our great-great-grandfather came upon a unicorn, which he treated his pocket full of rainbows for the sparkle that one day it would become polar seltzer unicorn kisses. That's what I'm having. I don't right like now. the unicorn kisses, Krem. I think it tastes too much like perfume. It tastes like a horse's mouth. Uh, no. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I would not know that you for whatever do. reason. You, you do. <laughs> Chad turns inquisitively. <laughs> I've seen some of those videos on the internet. Hey, 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 we, we shall not speak of those. I use my other stage name for that. <laughs> but uh, great time. And also thank you to Mass Mails Trump for hosting us once again. We are here for the first time by the Bunker Hill down in Auburn here at the Horgan Arena. Everyone doing a fantastic job. Everyone was fantastic with the NSO slow referees. Again, like many of them, pulling double, triple shifts all tournament long, and we still have a whole another day to go. And Krim, shout out to you for being fantastic. Oh. Has anyone given you a shout out today? Probably my mom somewhere, but she's probably telling it to random strangers who are like, who the hell are you and who is Kat? <laughs> Why would you name your child such a thing? All right, our or it looks like our jam refs are making their way to the NSO table. I think it is clear, clarifying that point spread because at this point, yeah, Twin State looks like they are going to take this. But I think it comes down to that point spread that happened because as we saw, the, and the game ended, but the game just kept playing itself out on the track. They just couldn't get enough derby. Who can get enough derby? I don't think it's possible to get enough derby. Uh -uh. This is a renaissance painting we're looking at. The nervous coaches in the background. We have a nervous person up in the stands. Shreddy with her serial killer smile that never goes away. That girl makes me, she does, she makes me nervous. Like. We were down in Dallas two years ago, and I turned to her and I go, I like your smile. Ted Bundy used to smile a lot, too, at his own trial. Oh, we love Shreddy. Actually, another skater who's improved greatly, becoming one of like the top blockers that we've seen here for the Riveters. Especially if you team up with Rexy, forget about it. And I don't mean forget about it. Another skater for the roller derby. <laughs> Hawks. They're saying she's so sweet. Yeah. They, uh -huh. said, they said Ted Bundy was nice too. We yeah, know. Yeah. They still think he's cute and wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I don't, that's, a whole, that's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. <laughs> oh, we got a little dancing going on. I and knew that, we'd see some. It's not a derby bout without dancing. Anyway. By the way, I think this is, like I said, the coolest arena. Not being like, oh, this is red. I mean, they've had the dehumidifier kicking on since Wednesday. It's like air conditioned in here. It's nice. I have not even broken a single sweat all day. It's I've broken a one sweat. So, guys, there is an official review. We, we're, we're waiting. 
Yeah, official review at the very end here, Splice. And I think it came down to the point spread because what happened was, as you saw, the game, game clock ran out, but the skaters kept skating and the points kept going up in the air. <laughs> Yep. So the game's gonna have to be done. There was no time to end it. Oh, uh, because well, because when I turned, both clocks had run to zero, and and they were still yeah, they were yeah, still going. Three quarters of a lap. Oh God, right? yeah. Yep. Yes, that's why. Even even if you come down and lost that point spread, you know how much that means. So I'm gonna talk to our alt ref Guinness here. I'll be right back. Krim stopping the Guinness. Getting on the deets, pointing at a clipboard. It's very official. Cheers are going up. Uh, so, yep, that's it. Uh, yep, as we talked about before, there were points picked up. Uh, there was a challenge on Twin State that they did get two extra points there and the, the refs agreed. The crowd noise was so intense in here, they did not hear the, that whistle being blown. So they did retract two points from Twin State. So they're down 172, 157. And, and they did retain the review. And as uh, Coach Guinness said, I'm sorry, Referee Guinness said, we're just gonna wait to see if there's another official review call. But I don't, I don't think they're gonna do that. I think they're happy with what they're at. There was a great game played by both these teams. Uh, any, any final thoughts? No, I think everyone did a great job. Everyone's putting, getting, lining up for those high fives. And you got to talk to Pale Raptor about her awesome skirts. Yeah, kilts apparently. Yeah. All, all right, I'd like to thank everyone once again for joining us here. Stick around, we're going to have Muddy River versus Maine. I'm the CAC. And this is Johnny Weir. And we'll see you soon. Bye.